Parshas Vayishlach, Tov Shin Pei Aleph. As we move along through the Parshiyos and Bereshis, we speak about the Ovois, the Imois, now the Shvatim too. This week, the end of the week will already be Hanukkah, and right, we just passed Sukkot, and here we are, Hanukkah coming up this week, and uh, we look forward to this beautiful Yom Tif, but time flies along, and if you want to learn these parshias, you have to sort of pay attention, because we're speeding right by, and all these great lessons to learn have to be learned now. And the beginning of our parsha this week finds us on the cusp of this long anticipated meeting between Yaakov and Esau. And truthfully, Yaakov Avinu did not really know what to expect. He's going to meet his brother. He knew his brother didn't like him that much, but he was still his brother. And Yaakov Avinu, because he didn't know what to expect, he was going to be ready and prepared for any and every eventuality. Yaakov Avinu, whatever Esau was going to throw his way, Yaakov wanted to be ready for that. And Yaakov was even afraid that, you know what, it may come to war, to war a Milchama with his own brother Esau. Pretty bad. And the Torah tells us about this. Yaakov Avinu wasn't just afraid, he was very afraid. And Yaakov Avinu, he made preparation for war. He split the family that if Esau came, he said, he made two camps. And Yaakov Avinu said, If Esau would come and go to war with one camp, with one half of the family, at least the other half will be saved. And even more, Yaakov Avinu continued after that. And he said, he had a tefillah. Yaakov Avinu was ready for war. Tefillah. And Yaakov Avinu says, Save me, spare me from my brother, from Esau, and why it says miyad ochi miyad Esau, that's really something else. Maybe we'll touch upon it before the end of the year. But Yaakov Avinu said, save me from my brother from Esau. Ki yoreon ochi oisoy, I'm afraid of Esau. Pen yoboy bihikani, maybe Esau is going to come. And he's bihikani aim al bonim. He's not going to have rachmanus on anybody. Mothers, children, Esau is going to just go and wipe out everybody. The Gemara, Mesech the Brachas, asks a question about this. Mesech the Brachas, Dabdalit Amar Aleph. Those of you who remember, we're almost a year into Daf Yoimi now, but this was in the first three days of Daf Yoimi. Now we're already holding two weeks into Mesech Psachim. We're starting some very, very um, tough sugyas um, this Shabbos. Rav Chanina Skana Kayanim, there's a lot to learn about. If you remember way back when, at the beginning of the Daf Yoimi, Hashem told Yaakov previously, Yaakov Avinu, don't be afraid, don't worry, I'm always going to be with you. And over here, he said, not only am I going to be with you, Hashem says, and I'm going to watch you, Gave Yaakov Avinu a Havtocha. Yaakov Avinu, don't worry, I'm going to be with you. And I'm going to watch you, whatever you do. So, Frek the Gemara, why did Yaakov, what's this Vayiro Yaakov Ma'od? What is Yaakov Avinu afraid of? How could you be afraid? Hashem specifically told you that I'm going to watch over you. Yaakov Avinu, why are you afraid? So, the Gemara gives the famous answer of Yaakov Avinu was afraid, Shema Yigroim Hachet. Yaakov Avinu was afraid, maybe I did some Averis. Maybe I did something that I lost my schusim. I lost my schusim, now I have to be afraid of Esau. 
Correct in the Siva Shalom. The Siva Shalom asks on this, why is that answer of the Gemara, Shema Yigra Machet, why is that an answer to the question that he asked, why Yaakov Avinu should be afraid? We all know, and we have to know, we have to have this ingrained in ourselves, that Bitochein in Hashem is meant to be in any matzah. Bitochein in Hashem does not have to do with where you are holding in your life. Even if a person has Averois, of course they should still have Bitochein in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Hashem is going to help them. What does that have to do with anything that Yaakov Avinu was afraid that maybe he did an Avera? Even a person has to know that even if you don't deserve it, even if a person could, is possibly has done things even to be called a Russia, you need to still have Bitochain in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And all the more all the more, the more bitachain someone has, the more help that the person gets and the bigger the Yeshua will be from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You look through the Tzvarim HaKadoshim, they all speak about what is bitachain. Bitachain is not just believing in HaKadosh Baruch Hu and believing that everything is for the best and everything will be good, but bitachain is something that helps you. The more bitachain someone has, the bigger the Yeshua is that you will get like the Ramban tells us, the Ramban tells us in the Sefer, Emuna Ubitachain, on the Pasuk in Tehillim, of oh, the Pasuk in Tehillim says, Betach Bashem Baaseitoy. Have Bitachain in Akash Baruch Hu and do good. Zok the Ramban, that you see in this Pasuk that Betach Bashem comes before Baaseitoy. First, have bitachin. That's elementary. That's fundamental. That's no matter what. And then after that, va'asei toiv. Of course, we want you to be good and to do good and do what a kaddish baruch wants. But bitachin, it should be contingent upon where you're holding in your life. It's not that way, and it should never be that way. Betach b'ashem comes before va'asei toiv. That even if a person thinks inside that they're no good that they've done so much wrong, one should still be boiteach in the chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So the question remains, why was Yaakov Avinu afraid? So the Siva Shalom explains along the lines of another Ramban, and that there's a whole Ramban that speaks about my say avoy simon labanim. We all know that like we say all the time from the Siva Shalom, that the the Torah is not a storybook. And my say Ovois Simon Labanan. It's a message to us. Things that happen with the Ovois, things that happen in the Torah, it's a Simon Labanan. It's for us to learn lessons to how the Hadracha for our lives. And this battle that was about to be waged now, this battle that Yaakov Avinu was afraid, this battle between Yaakov and Asa, it was representative of the eternal struggles and battles that everyone in future generations would have. And that is really what Yaakov was afraid of. You know what Yaakov was afraid of? Yaakov had no fear of the physical danger or harm that Esau may cause him. But Yaakov Avinu is not afraid of Esau. He has a avtocha from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Shmarticha B'chal Telech. Yaakov Avinu, of course, had bitochein. Physically, he was not afraid at all of what Esav would do. Yes, he talked in terms of Hikani, that he'll smite us, he'll go to war with us. Because, but when it comes to physical gashmias, a person should never be afraid. Shema yigroim hachet. That, you have, you have to have bitachon. Betach Bashem is there, regardless of whether you are up to the stage of asei toiv yet. Bitachon in Hashem, bitachon is that what? That Hashem treats us like a father to a son. And the treatment of a father to his son is absolute. And we know, we hold like Rameir, we paskin like Rameir, Ben kach u ben kach kruim bonim. Rameir says in the Gemara, it's Chazal, that whether we are doing the Ratz and Hashem, or sometimes, unfortunately, we are not doing the Ratz and Hashem, ben kach u ben kach 
Kruyim Bonim, we are always called children. We are never out of favor being called a child of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. As the Gemara, Sechta Rosh Hashanah, Daf Yud Zayin Omen Beis, the Gemara tells us about the Yud Gimu Midois, the Yud Gimu Midois begin, Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachum V'Chanon. And the Gemara tells us that, be, that it says Hashem, Hashem. It says it twice. Why does it say Hashem, Hashem? One is before an Avera, and the other one is that after a person does an Avera. This Hashem, Hashem, that no matter what, before or after a person does an Avera, it's still Kel Rachum V'Chanon. That doesn't change. That's a constant. Hashem is our Father. He always has Rachmanus and takes care of us. But ya- what Yaakov Avinu was afraid of, Yaakov Avinu was afraid of the Ruchnius. Yaakov Avinu was afraid of the Koya Chara, that Esav can do the damage he can do to his Ruchnius. And that's why the Pasuk says, Atzileni miyad ochia miyad Esav, the different ways that the Yetzirah of Esav can come to a person. At times, Esau's going to come like an Esau, where he comes to you and he wants you to do Averis, and he wants you to do bad deeds, and that is straightforward. That we can fight, but there are other times that Esau's going to come like Achi. Esau is going to come like he's your brother, he's your friend, where he'll let you learn. He's not going to fight you, he'll let you do what you want. He'll let you do my Toivim, but he'll want you to do it in the wrong way. He'll get you to have gaiva when you do things. He'll get you that the chesed should be tainted, that the learning Torah should be disturbed, that it should be tainted. He'll come to you as a brother, no problem, come learn. But here's the distractions along with it. And that is what Esau represented. And that is what Yaakov was afraid of. We know that one of the things Yaakov prepared for Esau was with doira, was with a present. So now the Nesiv Shalom asks, if we're saying that the whole battle with Yaakov Avinu was Mochemes Hayetzer, or Yaakov Avinu was afraid of the damage that Esau could do with Ruchnius, what does it have to do? Well, I understand Tefillah, I understand Nochama, but what is Doiran to come give Yaakov, to come give Esau a present? How is that relevant to Ruchnius? How is that relevant to this battle? Says in Siva Shalom a beautiful thing and a beautiful lesson. And we speak about Siva Shas. I think Rabbi Fran spoke a little about this by the past Siva Shas almost a year ago. And he says, and Siva Shalom says that when it comes and the Yetzirah takes you and he says, you know what, come, come learn, come learn, but I'm going to give you a little distraction. <coughs> I'm going to give you something. He's going to taint your Ruchnias. So a person might say, you know what, I'm not going to do it at all until it's perfect. I'm not going to do it at all until it's perfect. So the Siva Shalom says, you know what the present is? You tell the Yetzirah, okay, I'm not going to be perfect right now. I'm not going to be perfect today, but I'll give you a present. You know what? You want me to go learn? I'm going to go learn. I'll let you get me to learn. So I'm not going to be perfect this time, but I'm going to work on it. I'll be perfect. I'll be better in a week. I'll be better in a month. I'll be better next year. And that's the present you hand. That's the doyron. Yaakov Avinu was saying that even though it's not going to be perfect, you tell him, okay, I'm going to go along with you this time. Because if you wait to be perfect, you wait for everything to be exactly in order, you may never start. The Mishnah Perkei Avos tells us, Don't say that when I'll have time, when I'll be able to, that's when I'll learn. It says in the Siva Shalom, to prove our point from this Mishnah, that when I turn away from everything else in the world, that's when I'm going to learn. No, a person has to say, don't say, when I'll be perfect, I'll learn. Just go ahead and say, I'm going to do what I can do now. And if you always do what you can do now, do what you can do today. You're not going to be the best. You're not going to be perfect. Do what you can do today, and then you'll grow. Always take advantage of your opportunities that you have right now. And if you do that, then you will grow. That's the lesson. That's what Yaakov Avinu was afraid of. Yaakov Avinu was afraid that Esau would damage their Ruchnias and tell him, no, you won't learn until you're perfect. That is one of the lessons we need to learn from our Parsha.